Hallelujah. Let me start this time clock right now because I always <laughs> tell my husband to give me a sign, and he does, but they never work. <laughs> Did you see me? No, I didn't see you. So I'm, I'm realizing that I get into a zone, forgive me, and I'm going to use the clock and it will sound so then I'll know it's time. Amen. So I'm going to start the clock now. Amen. It's always interesting to hear my um, bio. I was thinking about it today and I said, you know, Lord, um, that bio would not even be possible without you. Amen. Everything that I've accomplished, I, I can stand here to say I've only accomplished it by the grace of God. Appreciate and, you know, the Bible talks about him using the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Well, I'm one of them foolish things that, um, you know, most, uh, most, I'm not, I'm not um, of the learned, let's just say that. But everything that I've been able to do, God has enabled me to do it. And I'm so thankful for it. Let's just go to God real quick here in prayer. Heavenly Father, I come now offering myself to you. Uh, I give you all the glory. Hallelujah. I give you all the praise. I exalt you for you are God and besides you there is no other. Uh, God, I ask you to anoint these words that you have given unto me, Lord, because without your anointing, without you breathing upon these words, they will mean nothing. They will produce nothing. So I thank you right now for breathing your breath upon me. Use me for your glory, God. I submit myself unto you, God. Oh, I commit my vocal cords to you, my mouth, my thoughts. Let them all line up with what you desire to say. Help your people today. Help me today, God. I thank you that your desire is to bring us into your truth. I thank you for what you're doing in your body today, God. And I give you all the glory, the honor and the praise in advance. Amen. Amen. I want to thank Pastor Norma for her invitation. Every time I ask, um, I'm asked to speak, I always question, are you sure, Lord? Are you, <laughs> you sure you want me to speak? And I always do that to the very last minute. Why, you know, are you sure? And so I'm, I'm saying that because um, God has been revealing um, some things to me recently and e even as as uh, uh, to this to this afternoon, he's revealing some things to me. Because I'm gonna say breakthrough. I'm, I'm receiving breakthrough. Amen. 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 Our lives as Christians should be continuously a life of breakthrough, because we have some things that that are in us that God didn't place there. And he said to <clears throat> us, he said, "What my Father Jesus said, what my Father has not planted." It's going to be uprooting. Mm -hmm. And we have to be willing to submit ourselves to God for that process Amen. to take place. Right. Amen. Amen. So um, my mindset is changing. And I, I will share why. Um, tonight to me is a night of freedom. I'm decreeing a night of freedom. Not just for me, but for you and anybody else who will be watching. Because when God does something in us, he's not just doing it for us. It's for us and for somebody else. Believe you me, there's other people that need what done in their lives, what God is currently doing in mine. I thank you to my husband and my children. I told them to get here at 7.30 and they, they made it. They made it on time. So I just thank God for their support because, you know, they hear me all the time. And um, coming to hear me, um, speak, you know, sometimes can be um, not what they really want to do. <laughs> so I thank God that they're here and I have their support. Mm -hmm. I acknowledge all the leaders and all of you who came out on Saturday night um, to hear what the Lord has to say. I'm called as a watchman. God made that very clear to me years ago. He gave me the scripture Ezekiel 2, 3, and he said, I've called you as a, as a, as a watchman called you, um, I'm going to tell you some things, and I'm sending you to a people, and, and then sometimes he said, they're not going to hear you. Some of them won't hear you. I'm not sending you to a strange people, but I'm sending you to the house of Israel. And I was just a baby Christian when he first gave that word to me, and I'm thinking, okay, what does that mean? Well, I have learned what that word means, and if you don't know what a watchman is, a watchman is someone that does just that, watches. They hear what God is saying, and they send warning. They send out warnings. Sometimes we um, 
don't want to hear what God has to, to tell us. Um, another call is I'm a teacher. I love to teach. He, gets, he, he, he has anointed me to teach. And tonight is going to be more of a teaching and, and for you, but also for me, of what God is doing in me. I'm called as an intercessor and I'm called to young people. It, it, it grieves me to, it's been grieving me to see how young people, how we're losing so many lives. A lot of young people's lives are being lost. Um, and, and, um, because they're not, they don't, they're, they're not walking in truth. They're not, uh, some aren't even being raised up in knowing what the truth is. Yes. I've had several dreams and one lately of, a, of a, a dream of a being on this boat, making it on this boat and this boat was moving very quickly. And I'm telling you this, something came and all I could have time to say was Jesus. And then before I knew anything, I was on this boat, and this wave hit this boat, and this boat's moving. And I'm trying to save young people, and I mean, it's dangerous. One by one, I'm trying to put them on the boat. But the thing that really um, had me thinking when I woke up is this boat was moving so quickly. Mm -hmm. It was moving quickly that there, everyone couldn't get on the boat. There were people that, there were young people that were left behind. That, that affected me. And as you and I being in the body, it should affect us that there are people being left behind right now. Yeah, that our mindset should be about the kingdom. That's what Jesus told us. That's what he said. He said that we're to go in the world and make disciples. And sometimes we think that that means we are to uh, start a church and do all these big things. But we can make disciples right where we are whether it's at our job or whether it's in the grocery store or wherever it is, we're to be led by God's spirit. And, and, and we're gonna, I'm gonna talk more about this um, and get more into this message. But um, as I was thinking about this dream, I began to think about why were these, what all, why were some of these young people being lost? They were, could, they were trying to get on the boat but could not. And, um, and I couldn't help but to think about what the, the Holy Spirit has been teaching me over the last several years. And one of the things that he's been um, bringing up to me is that he has given us some weapons to, to, to walk in victory and to defeat the enemy, but we are not utilizing them the way we should. For the sake of time, well, let me, let me, let me just say, the, the scripture that God gave me for, uh, for, for the ministry that he's calling me to is based out of Isaiah 58 and 12. And I say that, my, you know, the ministry he's given me, but I believe it's the, the ministry for the church. You will rebuild the ancient ruins. You will raise up the age-old foundations. And you will be called the repairer of the breach. Mm -hmm the restore of streets in which to dwell. See, the Holy Spirit's been dealing with me over the last several years about restoring truth. I heard the book that I wrote, the first book that he gave me to write was restoring foundational truths to young people. He, there's so much out here now, many of you are not preaching to the choir, know that there's a lot going on and it's being taught that has this not based in truth. It's not based in the truth of God's word. And God's desire is that we get back to truth, get back to the, the simple doctrine. You see, one of the reasons I believe, other than because God is God and he can do what he wants to do, he used me. I'm, I'm, I was raised up in a Baptist church and, and mother family was Baptist, father was Methodist. And I couldn't tell you anything about what it means to be a Baptist or what it means to be about being a Methodist. All I knew is you went to church. <laughs> you went to church and you went to Sunday school. That's all I can tell you. And I knew the name of Jesus. So I wasn't, couldn't understand, I didn't understand doctrine and all those things that can get us weighed down into um, believing God. And when he finally did say, when he fit, fit, saved me and filled me with his Holy Ghost, I had instant faith in God that day because I had I didn't have to filter through a lot of stuff. But what I did have to do was submit myself to things that I did not know, i.e. the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You shall receive power. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. There were things that I didn't have any clue about, but I had to open myself up to those things, praying in the spirit, understanding all of that. But there's still many things that I don't understand, and I'm going to talk about two of those things that he has um, brought a greater level of revelation to me. This is a year of the open door. We know that, and I believe that God wants to open doors for us, um, and he wants us to be prepared to walk in them. I, I, Many times we can want to do something that we're not prepared yet to do, and I just thank God that he did not allow me to do things that I was not yet prepared quite to do. And then there were things that I know that I did do, and I look back and say, oh God, how did you allow me to do that? Because I was not walking in the full truth. But God is so merciful and he's so kind that he works to get us where we need to be. So for many months I've been praying and I want to pray this scripture even over us because I think this, uh, this, this prayer in Ephesians is an excellent prayer. And it's an excellent prayer to pray every day because I've been noticing God actually answering this prayer. This prayer is Ephesians 1, verses 17 through 19, and it says, God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give us a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of Jesus. You know, we've got a lot, there, there's a lot, a lot of us aren't really walking in the full knowledge of Jesus. Jesus is always revealing truth. He's always revealing himself to us. I used to see Jesus as a um, as a dictator, but that wasn't truth. That wasn't he. He can be a dictator in that he's a god of per, he's a protector. He's not a dictator. So you see, based on our experiences, we have we need to we need to ask for wisdom. We need to ask for revelation in the knowledge of Jesus because we're not always walking in the knowledge of Jesus. And then it goes on and says, let the eyes of our heart be enlightened so that we would know, that's a key word, know what is the hope of your calling. We need to know what the hope of his calling is for each individual one of us. We need to know what, I, what the hope of his calling is for us. What he's called me to is not necessarily what he's called you to and called you, but he's created us, the Bible says, before the foundations of the earth. And every individual has been created with purpose. Every person. Every, when he began to reveal to me uh, concerning his thoughts on abortion, and he began to show me why abortion was so offensive to him, it's because God is the only giver of life. He tells us in, he's, in Ezekiel, he said, I, when you were in your blood, I said, live. If God doesn't speak over us and tell us to live, we never would have made it. So you can imagine those that um, that don't make it, and those of us who have made it, you've made it through miscarriage, you've made it through abortion, you've made it through any and everything that could come against you coming into this earth, and yet you're here. And the fact that you're here says there's something great about every single person that comes into this earth and makes it here, our lives. We need to know what that hope of his calling is. And what are the riches, this is the biggest part that he is beginning to highlight to me. What are the riches of the glory of your inheritance from the saints? He began to show me there's so much that he has given us as an inheritance and most people never get to understand that full inheritance. And he gave me the example, he said, if if I were, to, if someone were to tell you you have an inheritance, but you need to go down to the attorney's office and you need to sit down and go through all the paperwork and find out how what it is you've inherited, how about you would run real fast <laughs> and you would stay there until you found out every single thing you got. But yet God has given us an inheritance that is better than any inheritance man could ever give us. Amen. And we have to find it, it in, out in, from this book. And it's filled with all kinds of good stuff. And yet, we let this book sit. 
very rarely some most people don't even open it up or we go on what other people say or we go on what we were told well i'm going to tell you i was told a lot of things growing up from my parents to whatever that i found that weren't true mm -hmm. and i and it's not that i went to question what i was taught it's that we're we're and our parents we're, we're imperfect our family members our friends our teachers whoever they're imperfect people but we have a great teacher that God gave us. It's called the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he said, I've come to teach you all things. I've come to teach you truth. And if we subject ourselves to him, if we open ourselves up to him, he will lead and guide us into all truth. Yes. Amen. And that's what he's for. He'll tell us what our inheritance is. And we're going to talk a little bit about our inheritance in a moment. And what is the surpassing greatness of your power? towards us who believe. Yes. Do you know we have the greater one lives on the inside of us and we can tap into this power anytime we need to. The power is and should be on the inside of us. That everywhere we go in any situation, we have power, dunamis power, that we should be able to tap into at any given moment, at any given time. That's right. That's right. For any situation. That's right. We are the ones that hold the power. That every situation that we could come about, that's needed. And not just for us, mainly not for us. Because the power is not even given for us. It's given for, for others. And we have to learn how to tap into this power. And we have to learn how to use, allow God to use this thing that's in us. Because we can get in his way our thoughts, our way of thinking. So in order to take full advantage of the open doors, we must be enlightened. They, several months ago, the enemy, the, the Holy Spirit began to tell, he said to me this thing, he said, the enemy banks on you not knowing. He banks on us not knowing. The Bible says it like this, my people perish for lack of knowledge. If we don't know that we have something, we're being stolen from. And we don't even know we're, we're, being, we're, we're being stolen from. And we got a lot of goods that we are, that, that some, and I'm not saying everybody, but some of us are being stolen from and we don't even recognize it. And, and I'm here to tell you, these goods are not based on who you are. Not, this, this is the part that's going to get so great that, that, that I'm excited about that I had to be delivered from and I'm being and I'm being delivered even as we speak from this mindset there's two areas I just want to emphasize tonight and that is the name and the, and the music was all up in the message the music all up in the message the name and the authority of Jesus and the blood, the blood of Jesus. Do you realize that's the, all we need right there? The name, all them songs we sang, that's right. All them songs we sang, all talked about the name. You reign, dominion, authority. You reign. His name is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess. We're going to talk about the blood. Because the devil has no answer for it. He has no answer for the blood. None. He's defeated because of the amount. That's right. A few months ago, I heard the word in prayer. I was in prayer and I heard the word occupy. Now, I knew that it was in scripture, so I looked it up of course and it's Luke 19 and 13 Jesus is speaking in a parable about a ruler and it reads and he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them occupy till I come it goes on to say he, he gave them all ten, ten um, um, pounds which was money and it goes on to say the ruler was coming back and he was expecting to receive something in return for what he gave. And when he came back, the one he gave 10, 10 pounds said, hey, I got 10 pounds more than the one that he gave five pounds. He said, I got five pounds more. 
But then he went, came to another one, and he said, I hid mine. I, I, I was scared. I, I didn't do anything with, with what you gave me. Now, I began to think about that because I'm the one who received that word, occupy. That means I might not be doing some occupying if I heard the word. I might have be one of them, that, that servant who had these, who had something that God wanted to use but was scared to use it. And therefore, sitting on something viable. How many of us have, have the Holy Ghost and we don't utilize him like we should on a constant, continuous basis? And he's the treasure that's in the inside of us. We've got a treasure on the inside of us. Amen. Amen. He goes on to say in the parable, Jesus is saying that we are to do business for the kingdom of God, that he is going to expect a return. We're not going to be able to stand and say, well, I was scared. He's going to say, I gave you the Holy Ghost. I've given you my word. I've told you I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. We are to use what he's entrusted and stewarded to us. This includes our gifts, our talents, our abilities, and most of all, our privileges as children of God. We are to use it all for God's glory and to advance his kingdom. Now, recently I had an impartation of authority from God, and it and I didn't understand what it, what it was. I kept asking God, what does this mean? What's this all about? I started to ponder and ask questions. What does this mean? And I received some wisdom, but it wasn't until about a week ago I was dealing with a situation and the Holy Ghost gave me some revelation. And I want to first of all say, I want to thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We just Amen. celebrated Pentecost, Amen. which represents the outpouring of his Holy Spirit. If, if we didn't need his Holy Spirit, God wouldn't have went, he wouldn't have told the disciples, the 120, to go into the upper room and wait. He said, and I'm going to endue you with power. We've got so many churches that don't even teach about the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then we've got so many people that are embarrassed to use the gift that God's put in them. And it's power. It's authority. Won't use it. And yet God said it was a gift and it's given to us so that we can live successful down here and help somebody else to live successful down here. So the Holy Ghost is significant in the life of a believer. He's our helper. He's our teacher. It's impossible to live a successful life without him. Now recently, as I said, I had something on my heart and and um, I was, I, and I heard, I heard pray, take authority. And immediately I felt a feeling of condemnation. And I remember this subtle accusation that if the Holy Spirit hadn't revealed to me, it would have been just like any other circumstance and situation. I, it would have just glossed over. And I heard this subtle accusation that said, how are you going to take authority over this behavior when you do such and such? You aren't right yourself. How are you going to pray for somebody else? You do this, you do that. And I, be, and I look back now and I was entertaining those thoughts like I would any other time. How many of you have ever had accusations thrown at you? And, I, and if you haven't noticed them, begin to ask God to show the Holy Spirit to show you. Because I can bet you there are some subtle accusations that are coming at your mind and your thoughts that you don't recognize because they have become just a part of you. They have just become a part of what we accept. And those accusations were coming. And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, I was, I was coming in agreement with an accusation so suddenly like, yeah, that's, that's true. And, and then very quickly I heard the Spirit of God say, you don't operate in your own righteousness or your own authority. Oh, God, thank you. Yeah. He said, the authority I have given you isn't based on your goodness or your righteousness. What I have given you is delegated to you and is mine and is not dependent upon your righteousness. 
He says it's based on Jesus's righteousness. You have been made righteous by the precious blood of Jesus. Therefore, you are authorized to use it. All my life, I have been striving. And God said, it's time to abide. That it's not about us. It's never been about us. It'll never be about us. Several years ago, the Holy Spirit gave me this quote, and I wrote it down. And I really didn't quite understand. All these things are becoming full circle. And, he, and, and this is the quote that he gave me. The longer I live, the clearer I see, the more I understand that it's not about me. This is good news. Jesus just needs our willingness and our obedience. You see, the enemy had me trapped into thinking that my ability to do or God use me was based upon if I was good or not. And that good according to my own standard of what's good. Not even according to God's standard. And so if he can get us into thinking that do you know how he's robbing? He, first of all we've made our own self God. We've made our own self little gods because we are now operating in our own righteousness. I can't do that because I couldn't understand for years. I would, I would be somewhere and, and, you know, let's say church and I'd say, God, I don't want to pray today. I don't want to pray. Don't call me. Don't call me. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. As soon as I'd say it, he'd call me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every single time. I didn't understand why. And now I understand why, what he was saying. It's not about you. All I need is a body, a willing body that will offer itself as a living sacrifice. Kill your own thoughts about what it is you can do, what you can't do, what your abilities are, what you feel like doing, what you don't feel like doing, and submit yourself to me. Because when he works, he's not, it's not me. Or if he's working through you, it's not you. It's his power, his spirit, his might. Amen. He just needs us to cooperate. All my life I used to think, God, why didn't you make me smarter? He said, well, if I would have made you smarter, then I wouldn't even be able to use you. Because then you would think your intelligence would be more than me. And so if you're in the company of being the least of these, you're in good company because God desires to get all the glory. See, everything we're able to do, we now do it through him because of him. He comes upon us and we're able to do what we do. Nothing else. We just offer ourselves and then he. So I began to pray for this situation. First of all, I repented. I had to confess, Lord, you're right. I do such and such. I confess it. I repent. See, we can't forget about that peace. We have to confess when he reveals things to us, and we have the ability to repent. And then we just move right into what he said to do. Because the enemy is not moved by what Francine says. The enemy is moved by what God says. Amen. Amen. That's where the power and the authority is. So when we're out here in the street and we're, we're out here in this world operating, God says, you see that person right there stop by, I want you to hang, I want you to say this to him. I want you, and you're like, oh God, I can't, what if they, and oh. God said, I got it, trust me. I know what's going on, it's not you, it's gonna be me. Just, 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 just listen, just listen and do what I ask you to do. And then his, all he needs, he, he said to me, all I need is people to cooperate with me. I just need a people who will cooperate. Will you cooperate with God? Will you co fully cooperate? Some of us think that we know exactly what God wants. And we have preconceived ideas. And God is saying, empty all your preconceived ideas, your preconceived thoughts. Amen? Jesus' authority. 
Luke 10 and 19 says, Behold, I have given you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing will injure you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, he says, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. You know what he was saying? He was saying, yeah, the disciples went out and he sent them 70 out in there and they came back rejoicing saying, wow, even the devil, even the demons are subject to us. But they said something real powerful. They said, in your name. That's how, now when this happened, Pentecost wasn't even, hadn't happened yet. The outpouring of the Holy Ghost hadn't even happened yet. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But the name of Jesus was all they needed yeah. when they went out. Right. Think about that. Right. All they did was use the name and, the, and they said they were subject to us because of your name. Amen. Are you using the name? Yes. Are you yes. using the name of Jesus? All the time it's yes. in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, don't let the, the world system fool us into thinking we can pray. It's in your name we pray. Or, amen. It's only in the name of Jesus. Every knee bows and every tongue. There's no other name that has been given on in heaven and in earth above that name. That's why the enemy doesn't desire that we use that name because he knows that. That's, that's the only power of deliverance is in the name of Jesus. Today as I was walking, and this was later this afternoon, the Holy Spirit said, your qualification isn't based on your standards. This makes, this makes you your own God. Jesus sets the standard, not us. We must be willing to allow the Holy Spirit to challenge us if we are to walk in the fullness of Christ. The Bible says we are to be transformed by the renewal of our minds. We are trained, sometimes, some of us are trained to think like the world and some more than others. But the Holy Spirit informed me that the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the world is nothing more than a way of thinking. How do we think? Do we think like the world? Do we think like the kingdom? And that's why we have to be into the word because we have areas in our life where we might be thinking more like the world mm -hmm. thinks on any given subject. So we have to always submit ourselves to the teaching and the leading of the Holy Spirit. The second thing I want to mention is the blood, the blood of Jesus. The, the Holy Spirit has been emphasizing to me the blood the blood of Jesus. You see, every privilege we have in Christ, we obtain through the blood. I've had many dreams in which I was drawing the bloodline. And every time in the dream I would draw the bloodline, the enemy would cook off running. I mean, ran like a baby. All I had to do was draw the blood and draw the bloodline and apply the blood of Jesus. Leviticus 17 11 says this, for the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh atonement for the soul. Our works, our goodness doesn't atone for our sin, but the blood of Jesus. I'm reminded of the song, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I don't know about you, but I know I'm not the only one. And there are many people who are Christians who are still operating in a works mentality. That I have to do such and such and such and such. Or I'm being judged by God if I, if the condemnation that comes if I don't do such and such and such and such. And God is trying to get us free so that we are not bound by the lies of the enemy that we what is going to set people free is the blood the blood is what has set us free the blood is what sets people free every accusation that comes we should apply the blood god knew we would continue to sin he said while we were yet sinners he died for us 
That means he already knew long before we sinned or would sin that he laid down his life. That means we're going to sin now. And when we do, he has already given us the remedy for it. It's the blood. Amen. Now, the enemy will come at us and uh, accuse us. The Bible says he's what? He's an accuser of the brethren. That's what his job is. And if he can get us to get in guilt and condemnation, then we cannot walk in the fullness and the authority of Christ. Not to mention, how are we going to fully help somebody else out if we're walking in condemnation? If we're walking in shame, we're going to we're going to end up spewing that out on other people. And this is back to foundational truth that God wants us to utilize the authority of the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. That is what sets us free. Our Heavenly Father has given everything we need to occupy on this earth. We are called to execute. Execute is defined is to carry out or to put into effect a plan, order, or a course of action. Now, this is done not by might, according to Zechariah 4 and 6. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by God's spirit. It's not by our strength. It's not by our intelligence. It's not by all our good plans and all of the things that we think we can do for God. It's by his spirit. We need his spirit to inform us and tell us what it is to do. We may think we should go left. The spirit may say go right. We may think we should color it blue. The spirit may say it should be red. Are we being led by the spirit of God? Because the Bible says those that are led by the spirit, those are what? The sons of God. The sons of God. Amen. Lastly, John 15, 15 and 16 says, No longer do I call you slaves. Jesus is telling us, For the slave does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me. This is, this is, this is good. But I chose you. With all our weaknesses, our failures, our issues, whatever, He's chosen us, he said. I chose you. Knowing all of, you know, he knew that already. He knew everything we would end up doing, but he said, I chose you. And then he said, I appointed you. <clears throat> and then he says that you would go and bear fruit. Amen. And that your fruit will remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. So we've already obtained victory when we walk with Christ because he's already called us, he's appointed us, he's empowered us, he's all, he gives us by his spirit what it is we are to do, and he then it produces fruit. God does it all. All we do is offer ourselves a willing sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. That's our reasonable act. It's not about us, but it's about Jesus. Hallelujah. In conclusion, I want to mention I was meditating and pondering. I've been meditating and I'm pondering on this scripture. And I would tell you all to do the same because I believe there's power. There's, the Lord is saying a lot in this scripture. This is Revelation 12 and 11. And it says, and they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb. Ah, what a ah, the blood of the lamb. Amen. And then it says, and because of the word of their testimony, we speak the word and we speak and we stand on the truth, what God has said. But this is the other piece that nobody ever talks about. I always hear the scripture. We overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. But it says, and... We love not our life, even unto death. What does that mean? Hallelujah. That means that your life has to die. It's not about you. It's not about what you want. It's not about what you feel like. I was in prayer one day, just a couple weeks 
ago and I knew I should take an, um, I had an impression to take an offering to the altar and put it in the basket as a thanks offering. But I sat there and I said, Lord, I don't feel like it. I'm thinking, in my mind, I don't feel like it. A couple minutes later, a couple ladies walked in. They went straight up there and put the offering in the basket. I saw them went back to the seat. Convicted. So I got up, got my offering out my pocketbook, went up there, put it in, went back to my seat. And the Holy Spirit said to me, you see, that's a subtle example of how you worship yourself. You knew what to do. You heard what to do. But you chose to worship yourself. You chose to yield to what you felt like doing instead of what you knew that I wanted you to do. How often do we do that? That seems so small, doesn't it? That seems so small and insignificant. But it's those small, and the, what's the Bible say? It's the little foxes that destroy the body. Little things like that that we think are in, insignificant, they're not insignificant to God because That's those right. little things are patterns of behavior. That's and right. those little things the enemy uses against us, he has a, he has a place against us because we yield, we, we have not made God truly God in every area and in, in, in every situation. I would challenge you all to think about that scripture. The blood, we overcome by the blood. We overcome by our words of our testimony. We have to speak life. We have to speak the truth and we have to stand on it because the enemy is gonna always be lodging accusations against us about what we don't deserve. But we gotta know, you know, we gotta tell him, yep, you are right, I don't deserve it. The blood, the blood. By grace, I have been saved through faith. Not works. It's all what God has done. And then we have to know that we, we, we cannot love our lives. We have to be willing to submit truly ourselves to God. Truly and allow his Holy Spirit to show us where we are falling short. And the key to this thing is I didn't have to sit in that seat in condemnation when he said that to me. Now, most of the time, I would sit there and I would swallow and I'd say, oh, God, I messed up. Oh, God. I'm, you know, my mind would go, yeah. You know, I would start condemning myself. But that's not how God wants us to think. His Holy Spirit reveals something. All he wants is a, Lord, you're right and I'm wrong. Thank you for revealing that to me. And thank you for the blood of Jesus that has already paid for the price. Thank you that I'm already forgiven. Because he may turn around the very next moment and say, now go pray for that person. Right there, I want you to pray. And I'm going to need to know, just like you're going to need to know, you are operating not by your own righteousness, but by Jesus' righteousness. You have a blood-bought right to take the word of God and to use it and, and to triumph over the enemy. Amen? Amen? The name and the authority of Jesus plus the blood of Jesus spells victory. Prayer is the key that binds it all together. Jesus said in, his, in the word that he does nothing unless he first sees it, hears it from his father. Whatever he tells us to do, we do. He prepares us to do his will through our communion with him, but we must be able to stand with our loins girded about with truth. Now I believe it's God's desire that we get back to walking in foundational kingdom truths in order for us to be able to seize all the opportunities that are coming, the people that need to hear truth, the people that need to be set free. You know, years ago I heard the Holy, the Holy Spirit say, I was in church one day and I heard the Holy Spirit say, people are coming to the altar and they're getting more bound up coming to the altar. They're getting more bound up coming to the altar than, and they're supposed to be coming and get set free. Because see, that's what church will do. That's what yielding to doctrines of man will do. But when we get back to the simple truth of the gospel, the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, what he has done, what he has paid for, what we have in him, we'll be able to really see victory in our lives and other people's lives. 
So let's just end in prayer. Jesus, I know, desire that we shall know the truth and that the truth will set us free. Father, I thank you right now that it is your will that we walk in the full truth of your word. Father, I thank you right now that your word does not return unto you void, but it prospers, hallelujah, and where you have sent it. God, I thank you right now that you are breaking chains, you are breaking bondages off of your people's lives, God. If we can walk in the fullness of everything that you have purchased, by the blood of Jesus for us to walk in. God, I thank you right now, Father, that you are doing this not by my power, not by my might, but you're doing it by your spirit. Continue to open our hearts, God, where our hearts have become hard and soften those places right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, where deception may be operating, oh God. I pray right now, Father God, for you to break the powers, all powers of the enemy in our lives, to set us free and be open to what you desire to do and what you desire to speak over our lives. I thank you in advance. We thank you right now where our hearts are haughty towards you, God. Make them soft again. We thank you that you're doing all of this. Thank you for your respect. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the blood of Jesus that sets us free. Thank you for the name of Jesus that is above every name. Teach us how to use every weapon, God, that you've given unto us. We give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen.